थैंक यू सुधाकर जी एट द आउटसेट आई ओ टू थैंक द सिटीजन ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी एंड द ऑफिस बेरर्स फॉर हैविंग इन्वाइटेड मी ओवर हियर एंड गिवन मी द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू बी विद यू ऑल ऑन दिस लवली संडे मॉर्निंग आई एम श्योर वेन आई गो बैक फ्रॉम हियर आई शैल गो बैक वाइजर देन बिफोर and i look forward to this as an educative experience for myself learning from all those interventions and expressions that emanate during this session madam dr susila ji my friend sudhakar ji and the young friend rahul i don't know where to start from but uh, since the assignment today is to confined to the interlocutors report you see as far as we belonging to this ideology and this line of thinking are concerned within the party and outside i am talking of the larger family the larger family of the common vichardhara that we have been following we have always held this view that uh, in fact even when this announcement of the formation of this interlocutors committee was concerned that uh, there is no need for having a committee like this because we do not think that there is an issue with the in the english language issue has a negative analogy it's not absolutely as it is translated into hindi and as we you know इवन इन संघ परिवार इसे विषय विषय प्रस्तुत करें और अंग्रेजी में कहते हैं इशू इज प्रेजेंट तो इशू हैज अ नेगेटिव कॉनोटेशन इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज आई हैव इशूज विद यू मीन्स आई हैव सम प्रॉब्लम सो वी डोंट कंसिडर इट एन इशू देर इज नो इशू द स्टेट ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इज एज गुड और एज बैड एज द स्टेट ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश विद ऑल द अकंपनिंग गुड एंड बैड थिंग्स रेंजिंग फ्रॉम पॉलिटिकिंग टू करप्शन so what is the difference now <coughs> if you go back before i come to the interlocutor report i'll just take about 10 15 minutes the story of what has happened in jammu and kashmir is in fact a story of not only politicking but story of vested interests story of personal affiliations personal likes and dislikes and uh, the major factor that we have tended to ignore for reasons which were more convenient to us is that jammu kashmir if at all is an issue is an issue because as i said it has a negative connotation the word issue itself because it's part of the unfinished agenda of pakistan so it's not india because right from the time of partition Pakistan was not contented with having parted with the part of Jammu and Kashmir that is with India now so that is the issue we also try to sanctify it through parliament in 1994 through a unanimous all party resolution which stated that as far as we are concerned the only task left for us is to strategize contemplate how to get back the part of jammu and kashmir which is with pakistan so once that becomes a part of the parliament minutes becomes a part of the government policy i don't know what is this business of constituting committees and what for unfortunately as i was also responding to a question yesterday in bangalore the problem in india is that we never close a chapter we are politically still evolving you see way back sometime in 1966 when the 1965 war had just happened and this kashmir dispute thing had again raked up president lyndon johnson who had taken over from kennedy was addressing a press conference and there was an indian journalist mr inderjeet uh, who later on also started a news agency called uh, infa Uh, i used to contribute to that news agency write ups for many years in 90s he was also later on an mp member of parliament 
So Inderjeet put a question to Johnson that you are talking about this accession business. So is Texas not ex annexed by U.S.? And Johnson immediately interrupted him, snubbed him and said, look here gentlemen, that is a closed chapter. We no longer discuss it. Now unfortunately in India, we don't have closed chapters. In fact, we are always looking for the chapters which can be reopened. Because we are into politicking. If I have to be one up in this game of politics, I have to look for some issue which is settled but which could be made to appear unsettled. The, in the, at the time of partition itself, I think a bad beginning was made unfortunately by the then Prime Minister, Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru. I have been a great personal admirer of Jawaharlal Nehru. I have read Discovery of India more than 50 times and just I, I tell everybody that if you have a problem, a dilemma in life, you refer to Bhagavad Gita and if you want an immediate reference to the history, you refer to Discovery of India, which Panditji wrote in May 11 months, sitting in Ahmednagar Jair near Pune. But the, he, he was a great historian, a great orator, a theatrical speaker. But the problem is, at the time of partition, he crossed his brief and took over from Sardar Patel the responsibility of handling the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Whereas as Home Minister, Sardar Patel was dealing with more than 560 odd states. But since Panditji thought that he knew Jammu Kashmir better, he was also hailed from that place and he could do greater service to his community the service, the outcome of which is Rahul sitting as a migrant, a descendant of Panditji. So, since we live in an evidence-based era, I always try to put the argument with the evidence because otherwise you will be always dubbed as, as reactionaries. So you have to carry the discourse to their doors whose Balidan Divas happens to be on 23rd June and then, you know, it culminates on 6th of July, his birth anniversary, is also to educate and share with our friends how to counter these arguments to campaign because the campaign in the years to come, in the times to come is going to be scientifically based. You can't simply say that I don't agree with this. Look here, I got killed, my ancestor got killed. He says, no, so what? So many people get killed. The world goes on. You have to carry the discourse to their and in to their doorstep in the next couple of minutes i'll try to explain to you how we plan to do so at the time of partition there were two parts of india because this debate i'm i'll just refer to two or three debates which are currently going on in the country and every day uh, we are there in the tv shows doing that part of india was being directly governed by british which was known as british india and then there were other principalities. You had Nizams, as you had in Hyderabad, you had Rajas, you had Maharajas, you had everybody called himself by his own name. So there were over 500. So. Now the question was that you had to evolve a strategy to bring them all under the domain of a single Indian Republic. So how do you go about it? So it was decided with Sardar Patel being the torch bearer of this idea that the British directly ruled part of India will by and large be determined by the composition of the population. So part of Punjab which was having majority of Muslims like Lahore etc went to Pakistan, Amritsar came to India. Likewise Bengal got divided. Many of you may not be aware that Panditji had suggested to Gandhiji much earlier in 1944 that entire Bengal should go over to Pakistan. And it was Shama Prasad Mukherjee. I call Shama Prasad Mukherjee as the first angry young man of India. Much, many years before Amitabh Bachchan came on the screen. Because Shama Prasad passed away at the age of 52. And when, it, when, when he was doing all these things, I, it's unfortunate. I think this is, this is a tragedy of this nation 
that we have deliberately avoided educating our children about what shama prasad was a person who in his 20s becomes one of the leading lawyers without any patronage or family lineage by the age of 35 he is appointed vice chancellor of calcutta university and you had only three universities at that time in india set up by the british wherever they had presidencies you had calcutta university you had madras university you had bombay and none other than a britisher would be there and having been appointed vice chancellor this young man quits his job to follow this crusade and then you know makes visionary observations we have failed to honor his legacy anyway so what i was i just went straight to tell you that this was going to happen even at that time so now as far as the principalities was concerned it was decided that each of these princes would be given an option to decide which way to go india or pakistan it was not referendum repeatedly this thing is coming up isn't it in the media the other day yasin malik was asking me about a referendum i'll give you an answer for that also uh, on the times now show he was talking so i rebuffed him sir i will i'll explain to you the the discretion was with the raja or the nizam no some of them went this way some of them went that way okay now as far as the state of jammu and kashmir was concerned there was some delay because maharaja hari singh the then prince was already you know intrigued by the kind of conspiracy that was being hatched which he perceived by nehru ji and sheikh abdullah because sheikh abdullah had started a movement called quit kashmir movement way back much before 1940 now this quit kashmir movement again please note these things because they'll come handy when you argue this was not quit jammu and kashmir it was also not that quit india which came into being in 1942 you know the declaration of which was made from azad maidan in bombay now known as mumbai by aruna asif ali quit kashmir was against the hindu rule he wanted maharaja hari singh to quit so that the kashmiri muslims should not be subordinate to his rule anyway now nehru around the same time the world war has ended i mean these are things not written not said not discussed you have to have research mind to you please go into this ne in the post war era nehru was emerging larger than size emerging like a world leader and he also had that uh, potential and he believed that he could be so and rightly so we don't dispute him for that along with nasser and other things so he thought that sheikh abdullah was an instrument which could carry forward his agenda of democracy apostle of democracy apostle of peace as nehru ji you know started looking at himself at one time he even said that we disband all the army because there is not going to be any wars any more he went to that extent so he started patronizing sheikh abdullah prompting him and gradually this quit kashmir got converted into quit jammu and kashmir without the nomenclature and the movement became against maharaja so that is why maharaja was taking time now meanwhile pakistan sent in its infiltrators there was an attack maharaja as a true patriot and a nationalist wanted to save his subjects and had no other option but to approach the government of india and the government of india and the lord mount betton that time had produced that letter of accession here to sign that now that about closes that chapter of accession and later on he was also pressurized to appoint sheikh abdullah as the head of the emergency government maharaja's role ends there as a respectable citizen a respectable sanatani hindu he left jammu never to come back and died in mumbai in 1962 that chapter is closed now you say it was accession not merger this debate is currently going on and umar abdullah is on the forefront of this you can refute this at three levels when i did that umar abdullah and his father were took it as personal you can refute it at the level of literature at the level of constitutional and geographical and at the level of political facts literally the word 
मर्जर मीन्स विले इन हिंदी सो वेन यू एनेक्स द पार्ट एनेक्स्ड बिकम्स ऑटोमेटिकली मर्ज ओके इफ यू हैव अ हाउस एंड द एडजॉइनिंग प्लॉट इज ओन्ड बाई समबडी एल्स ही हैंड्स ओवर दैट प्लॉट ऑफ लैंड विद यू ही सेज आई एनेक्स दिस एडजस्टेंट लैंड टू राहुल राजदान सो बाई इम्प्लीकेशन दैट पार्ट ऑफ लैंड हैज मर्ज विद राहुल्स लैंड to say it is not so is like saying that lakshmi devi is married to sri nivasan but i am not sure whether she is his wife you are raising mysterious questions and this is also mischief so that is literature part i said that to umar abdullah because he is very fond of tweeting odd quotes which he read in high school we have burnt our head all through reading literature so that is one part now come down to the geographical and the constitutional part there was a document called merger document at the time of independence which probably he is trying to seek a resort that document applied in different situations i'll explain to you how because many of us have not understood that like for example it was decided that the states would be constituted on linguistic pattern and rightly so patel was right because otherwise there would no be not be any end because britishers had you know made it by convenience united provinces bengal mumbai bombay was one madras the entire all these three states so they thought if we go by religion and other things let's have this pattern and that's how andhra pradesh came into being where we are standing today you didn't have a state of andhra pradesh before 1947 it came into being after that now once you decide that this telugu speaking land or majority land becomes a state kind of andhra pradesh okay the question is what happens to hyderabad hyderabad was not under british it is a separately ruled independent ruled by nizam so where does it go so then you ask nizam you suggest to him that you merge with andhra pradesh so that's something different it's not an accent it's merging you go up north you had punjab amritsar lahore was with british but then you also had kapoorthala under a prince you had patiala the grandfather of present captain amrinder singh the former chief minister of punjab was the ruler so what do you do with these small states you cannot have hyderabad as a state or patiala as a state again you will end up being 500 so it merger was meant for them and thirdly we must also as i said take the carry the discourse to their doorstep and ask a chief minister who is supposed to be the custodian of the constitution under the oath of which he is supposed to function does he enjoy the prerogative to question the validity of same constitution does he enjoy that propriety and if he is genuinely convinced about what he is saying then propriety demands that he should first tender his resignation like again shama prasad ji did he was industry minister in the interim government with jawaharlal nehru around 1950 he said that repeatedly my mind things otherwise i think it's not proper for me to sit in this council so this is how. now this will go on and on i'll just talk about the do three nehruvian points and go over to the report as such because otherwise we'll talk for the whole day so we'll talk only about the report so about the three blunders which carry on till this day and which give the opportunity to some people to call this issue an issue which we don't believe is an issue a this bringing in of article 370 as rahul also pointed out it was not required once it becomes a state of india like any other state there's no reason why you should have anything other tagged down to it it was an unnecessary tag as you remove from your facebook it could have been removed and again again it was shama prasad who said in the constituent assembly that pandey ji i am not totally convinced about it and if you what he said pandey ji said no shama you don't know kashmir so well the people of kashmir will take some time till their minds and hearts come in so let's have it so he said then mukherji said then pandey ji can you put some rider on this time bound he said no 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 time bound not required shama don't don't be upset this is the exact words he said he said shama sir don't be upset ye dhara ghiste ghiste ghis jayegi 
धारा 370 घिसते घिसते घिस जाएगी बिकॉज नेहरू जी ऑल्सो यूज टू स्पीक अलाहाबादी उर्दू सो यू दे नो नीड ऑफ टाइम वील गो बिफोर दैट सो दैट वॉज फेलियर ऑफ नेहरूज विजन Nehru might have also realized that because in 1961 he is on record having said that I personally believe that Article 370 is no longer required. But he just lived about three years after that, and Gulzari Lal Nanda, in 1964, who was the uh, Home Minister then and has been acting Prime Minister twice. We have some of you know confirmed acting Prime Ministers, but all of them are not fortunate like Pranab Da to become President. Pranab Da was also one of the repeatedly becoming acting prime minister so was gulzari lal nanda ji he also subscribed to same view but by that time so much of vested interest had grown around article 370 that it has become un- difficult to undo it pandit ji also might have seen it beyond at that time he was also ailing after 1962 war he was quite frail and hardly he was devoid of any initiative so and over the period of time there's so much of vested interest by the bureaucrats by the politicians by the militants also by the foreign agencies that's becoming increasing to the extent that now one of our interlocutors report says that it has to be made permanent the second mistake which nehru ji in spite of being a visionary could have avoided is to carrying the issue to UNO in early 1948 as i said he was at that time trying to project himself as a as an absolute liberal democrat world leader and uh, but maybe he was also confident that with sheikh abdullah there the referendum will be in his favor now here this question will be put to you because we are all carrying out this campaign and as i said we have to be scientific in our argument we can't say nehru made a mistake sir okay he made a mistake but he was your grandfather he was the prime minister of india what he has done is on record you cannot deny that if i say my father produced an illegitimate child so but i can't deny that even nd tiwari can't deny that they go in for a gene test so it's on record so then how to refute it yes you have Nehru, of course, made a mistake because you were no meant for it was inter-country dispute. It was not meant for intra-country. But now, it is on record. It's not Nehru. It's the government of that time which went there under the prime ministership of a particular person. And Krishna Menon represented us, who was the minister that time. Delivered a speech for 14 hours, made a record, and I did a write-up. I said Krishna Menon spoke for 14 hours about Kashmir to an audience who did not know where is Kashmir. <laughs> so, so this is all on record. So you have to refute it. Now, how do you refute it? Nature has come to your rescue. The UNO resolution said that there could be a referendum if Pakistan withdrew from its territory. Now, once Pakistan having failed to withdraw, this becomes null and void. and this is exactly what provoked yasin malik on that tv show had started abusing me and then i said now under the present circumstances which referendum are you talking about the total state of jammu and kashmir please get your figures clear and we we have to fight it out scientifically in the next few years the total state of jammu and kashmir comprises an area of 2 lakh 22000 i'm giving just the round figures out of that almost 1 lakh and 12000 square kilometer is under the occupation of pakistan and china out of which gilgit baltistan also com- uh, comprises about 78 square kilometer then you have pok then you have about 5000 square kilometer which pakistan has given already to china sarkara karam pass and all so what you are left with is less than 50% of the erstwhile jammu kashmir now out of this 1 lakh around 1 lakh square kilometer which is there with india the kashmir valley comprises 15 to 16 square kilometer the jammu region about 25 to 26 square thousand square kilometer and ladakh the largest about 50 to 60 thousand square kilometer so i asked yasin malik so you mean referendum in kashmir valley which is just 15% of the state of jammu and kashmir of the state of the jammu and kashmir under india so what is that referendum it's it's scientifically becomes null and void so this is the argument and the third mistake 
which I don't know why, because that time there was an exchange of population, the greatest ever exchange of populations took place in 1947 at the time of partition. Muslims were going that side, Hindus were coming this side. Some great actors went that side. Noor Jahan went that side. Mehendi Hassan went that side. You know, somebody suggested to Yusuf Khan also, you go that side. But he thought, no, I will get good films here. I will better stay back. Otherwise, no, you won't get a Bimal Roy to make Devdas. So, those who could not compete went that side. Noor Jahan could not compete with Lata Mangeshkar. Mehdi Hassan thought, Rafi is there, let me go. So, the, people were weighing their pros and cons. No, I am giving you the hard facts. Please apply your mind. It's not... Why all the Muslims didn't go to Pakistan? That is the question. When you had a two-nation theory, those who thought who would not compete enough or in their sphere and they could rule there because Noor Jahan found that she was sliding down with the coming in of Lata Mangeshkar. Anyway, that we can talk sometime later. We can have a full day session on the cinema also. We have thoroughly worked on all these things. Now, what I am saying is that in this melee, we had refugees coming from West Pakistan. By that time, Sardar Patel had died. Unfortunately, he lived only 2-3 years. He died in 1950. Govind Bhalapanth had taken over. And uh, he was a little pliable also. Nehruji also suggested and he agreed that these refugees coming from West Pakistan should not be encouraged to settle in Jammu Kashmir. Why? Because according to Nehruji, Jammu Kashmir is still a disputed territory. We have to get back Pak occupied Kashmir and these West Pakistan refugees should go elsewhere. They went elsewhere. They went to Delhi. And those who went to Delhi made it big. Jag Mohan is one of them. R.K. Dhawan is the other. And we had two Prime Ministers, Indra Kumar Gujral and the prime, present Prime Minister Manmohan Singh from Jhelum district of West Pakistan. We had our own Shri Lal Krishna Dwani ji from Karachi. So about 1.5 to 2 lakh people, even in spite of this decision, chose to settle in Jammu Kashmir. And now you have a unique situation, which is never seen in the history of the world, that this population which is now, you know, going through its third generation, has been living in free India for the last 65 years and doesn't have the voting rights. It cannot vote for the assembly. So these are the things you have to highlight. Has it ever been heard of, seen of? Because they are not considered the domiciles of Jammu and Kashmir. See the paradox. These are certain universal arguments which can break this jinx. If you just say, no, we don't agree. You say, no, okay, don't agree. Your father produced my mother's son and I have a gene test. So what is the answer? You have to have an argument which goes the other way. Now, as far as the interlocutor's report is concerned, I mean, we, because otherwise we'll call, keep talking about various issues and I don't want to take, you know, because the, our main focus is interlocutor. That is also the assignment given to me by the uh, party leadership. See, as I said in the beginning, we have always believed that we don't wish to have any kind of interlocution on this. We don't consider it as a dispute. The report, the group was constituted, I'll just give you a small background as far as we, the party, are concerned, in October 2010. Dilip Padgaonkar ji was also personally known to me quite well. He's been kind enough to publish our write-ups when he was editor with the Times of India. We thought he was a more uh, accommodating editor than many others. But he, personally, I feel he was a better man before he became an interlocutor. As, as La George Bernard Shah once said about Churchill, I knew Churchill for many years. He was a better man then when he was not a prime minister. So the problem here is that if you are in journalism, then you are also, you know, moving with politicians. Sometimes you get to know a certain powerful minister quite well, you also tend ambitions. And this interlocutor business is a very, very lucrative business. Because the government, if you are close to government, it's also a sort of a gaushala, rehabilitation center for retired bureaucrats or retired academicians or journalists who are close to the powers that be. And once you become an interlocutor, it's like your corporate thing. Then you become, you know, for a hike qualified for a high, qualified for a bigger company. Here, you become qualified to become a governor. 
that is a misfortune tomorrow you may have mr padgonkar as a governor irrespective of what rahul is crying about because he's already got his credentials good and i'm again saying this not without evidence the present governor of jammu and kashmir mr m m vohra retired as defense secretary of india was close to mr narsimha rao and the the sonia gandhi clan was appointed interlocutor in jammu and kashmir and is today the governor so this is a right path as far as the interlocutors are concerned after their appointment they started visiting state of jammu and kashmir they deliberately avoided meeting us each time he was making occasional calls to me on personal level but i said we have to be official as far as this interlocution business is concerned because tomorrow we'll have to take a position on that so the first time when he formally met us was when he arrived in our office that was uh, 16th of uh, january 2010 mr pagankar apologized he said uh, i'm sorry i could not get in touch with you earlier i am a nationalist after all i am an indian you have certain misgivings about me so we gave him a charter of our priorities which he carried back and he said he will get back to us in 15 days but none of them got back to us in 15 days meanwhile each time they were holding press conferences and saying we can discuss on me we can set up as i we raised this issue even then with chidambaram we held a number of press conferences we were the first to because we in fact we were restrained by our own party uh, some of leaders that go slow till the you know results come out i said he is exceeding his brief his brief is to find out facts he is being judgmental he is gone to study the topography of this place barkatpura and before stepping in he says the name of barkatpura should be changed eh? so anyway then they had three round table conferences they invited me and mr sushant rajin sushant the member parliament from himachal for that and from congress they had mani shankar here so this more of this stage manager thing going on we were always apprehensive we kept on pointing then about 8 months back mr padgonkar calls up and tells me that i have spoken to other leaders also and please restrain don't take a position because i have written all that you wanted to be written and soon after that we were also told by some uh, one of our senior most persons in delhi that you go slow we have a reason to believe that but then after all that to cut a long story short on the 24th of may when we were holding the national executive meeting in mumbai sometime around 11 o'clock this report makes public and this immediately mr arun jetli called for me asked me to prepare a note which i submitted to him and he then gave six points we took up a resolution which was presented by mr jetli at 4 o'clock so within 3 hours we were the first to react officially i'll read out to you the six points which we have officially taken up as our position and before that some of the misconceptions which have motivated the writing of this report and writing of certain facts which rahul was also referring to and professor sridhar too they i don't believe that they are misconceptions and i told mr gumbadgaonkar that some of my friends say that you have written it out of ignorance and i consider this as an insult to your intelligence you are too intelligent to write anything out of ignorance so since you are also a journalist and me too can i put it other way it is not ill conceived beliefs it is mischievously conceived beliefs and basically this is not by the default it is by design and they have already had certain preconceived notions ideas on the basis of which this was formulated our first and foremost because soon after the resolution was adopted and we were uh, uh, my senior uh, colleague my senior spokesperson madam nirmala sitaraman ji and me we were assigned by the party to read to the press and hold a press conference the first thing i said there is that which is of course not the point of contradicting the resolution the first thing is the issue of propriety please remember and please note something which is not 
been noticed by many of us this report was made public just 36 hours after the parliament was adjourned sine die whereas the report was lying in the home ministry for the level last seven months so if the government was sincere about it if the government truly believed in the supremacy of the parliamentary functioning it would have been in the fitness of things to bring it out so that means maybe the home minister himself was shy of subjecting it to a open debate and he just safely put it on the side the various misconceptions or as i said mischievously conceived inceptions and when i talk about what we have written mr padgonkar writes that article 370 is conditional we have nothing in the constitution of india or even the constitution of jammu and kashmir which became applicable in the year 1956 to suggest that article 370 is conditional on the one hand of course we are opposed to article 370 we have fought for the abrogation of article 370 that is one aspect but there is nothing to suggest that there is condition on the other hand it was temporary and these persons have made it permanent then he says the kashmir dispute kashmir is a dispute between india and pakistan again i have already elaborated a couple of minutes earlier about accession so if you go there there is no dispute and particularly so after 1994 resolution so they are legitimizing they are opening a closed chapter and what we have not written but i have otherwise written in the press in the form of write ups that has been circulated across this also amounts to violation of the code of conduct by these three interlocutors please remember they are government appointed interlocutors they were not appointed by citizens of democracy or sudhakar rao they were appointed by the government they were on the payroll they were getting honorarium 50000 each plus perks privileges to the extent of being enjoyed by a minister of state and a government appointed interlocutor is almost like a government functionary is supposed to work within the framework of constitution and is raising certain things they are liable to be booked under vigilance law also and the normal course you could have sent a notice for violation of the code of conduct third they say the kashmiriyat has to be addressed now see to be a fair interlocutor this part could have been avoided because if you today say kashmiriyat then jammu wala will say dogriyat ladakh wala will say he also need something because that boti language which is the spoken language is waiting to be included in eighth schedule so why particularly kashmiriyat which is just a part of valley you have gilgit baltistan you have shia muslims being killed in dozens the gross violation of human rights so that is one part again you are addressing only 15% now even after addressing 15% you can if, if the argument could be what then why what, what is the harm maybe they are more aggrieved they have faced more militancy so that is why we said now what is your counter argument your counter argument will say then what about rahul rajdhan kashmiriyat the essence is the presence of kashmiri pandit so can you visualize kashmiriyat in the absence of hindu because kashmiriyat defines the unique composite culture of kashmir where muslims sing shiva hymns and hindus also you know follow certain cultural dresses and other things like muslim that unique thing is kashmir if you have segregated how are you talking about kashmir so if to the precondition is that you have to carry back the kashmiri pandit there so that he can nourish that kashmiri when i made soon after migration a presentation before who that was in sri lanka on the rising upsurge of diabetes among kashmiri pandits so there was question because not many people kashmiri pandits became famous after migration rahul that is one advantage side effect of love you were come famous yeah you are right very few people who knew about this community so there were questions so somebody asked me what is the difference between this brahmin and that brahmin 
there only brahmins why so i said no in india heterogeneous nation brahmin each every brahmin is also not same ahingar brahmin of tamil nadu or a tripathi brahmin of uttar pradesh is different and kashmiri pandit brahmin of kashmiri brahmin is different so he said it precisely gave us the difference i said the precise difference is that ahingar brahmin will not marry a bride or a husband who is non vegetarian whereas a kashmiri brahmin is a fish eater brahmin so there itself is a, so that is composite that is composite that is so that part is refuted then you say that since it is a muslim majority state it has to be given some sort of constitution now your argument should be are we we have already refuted and rejected the theory of two nation but are we going to now revive that theory within the country now if that is the case tomorrow punjab six will say this is a six majority state we need to have our kind of thing or i was telling yesterday in bangalore yadurappa has a, can build up a case he say i i am a lingayat a lingayat majority state i am a lingayat majority leader so i should be the prime minister the chief minister so are you going to promote this on the basis of religion then he says it's a unique problem now he has being a highly brilliant journalist pilfered this phrase from chidambaram because chidambaram said kashmir is a unique problem i did a write up i said chidambaram said it's a unique problem and thereby pointed a unique set of interlocutors who have come out with a unique report then the report says parliament of india has no jurisdiction over jammu and kashmir he refuted that there is nothing nowhere written neither in the constitution of india nor in the constitution of state on the contrary on the contrary the jammu and kashmir constitution section 3 and 5 please refer because i said our discourse will be scientific our discourse will be academic will carry it to their doorstep section 3 says that jammu kashmir is an integral part of india and do amendments can be taken up by the popular elected assembly or parliament but no bill or amendment will be taken up with regard to section 3 and 5 so what is section 3 section 3 says it's integral part that means this part this section is never to be debated in the parliament or in the state assembly and section 5 says that the parliament of india will have jurisdiction over jammu and kashmir so this is part of our constitution so the report also is not only unconstitutional it is a violation of constitution by the state appointed functionary and this is being misused now the problem here is that report has been written it has been published it's become a reference point okay we don't agree with it but for the future times it's become a document so a document has to be refuted by a document that's why we are encouraging writings and we are soon going to come up with a vision document in fact this morning itself i received a call from shri raina singh ji who is heading this study group on jammu and kashmir and he was very anxious he said what are you doing in hyderabad come back and write that vision document so, so i said sir i'll be back soon we'll do that so, so a group has been comprised because what happens is once a marriage is solemnized you can say rajesh khanna and dimple kabadia never went along well okay but when he has cirrhosis he is in the hospital the wife is dimple only no that time tina will not come no just tell me she may have suffered all her life he may have a 100 other women but the when the old man is on the death bed the wife has to come because the document is there no i am telling you i am telling talking to you in your language you refute this now you have a document which has raised all these questions you have to refute it if it was not a document then as i said as i said in the party meetings also in day four we were in delhi i said as far as i am personally concerned i will not even like to give any argument for this report because i am so much in awe of what shama prasad ji did and any because some of our party men said he said you read it carefully there are certain good things also some senior person said i said a report 
which is written on the dead body of shama prasad shama prasad ji laid down his life for ek vidhan ek nishan ek pradhan and this report revives that so once i come across this line i need not go beyond that but that is again personal tomorrow they'll say oh, doctor is a reactionary emotional sentimental like a hindu parishad barkha that said you are hindu parishad that be so without getting that label we have to have a scientific argument so what is the scientific argument officially we have made six points we have put it on record and if the parliament say brings in this board it will be placed there also number 1 in the last 20 years the basic issue in jammu and kashmir is terrorism dispute and all we don't believe the report has not addressed that issue the entire this meli has originated because of terrorism which began in the late 90s the 1980s why what was the genesis of terrorism how terrorism could have been tackled better who is fanning this terrorism why this terrorism is not coming to the kind of culmination that it should have that should have been the main plan so this is our official number 1 this is the six points which we have highlighted at the national level and we have put it officially on record this is also part of our officially adopted resolution of 24th may it is again because of terrorism that dilip padgonkar was appointed interlocutor he owes it to he owes his job to terrorism if jammu kashmir did not have terrorism dilip padgonkar would not have been appointed as interlocutor so he should be indebted and he owed it so that is first the second is that the issue of the report has referred to pak occupied kashmir as pak administered jammu kashmir a second point 1994 congress government brings in a resolution and every party supports it and pok is an officially acknowledged recorded constitutionally valid now these government appointed interlocutors are giving it a nomenclature which is unconstitutional now this nomenclature was first raked up by padgonkar ji and some of his friends mr ved singh and there were some other group of that human rights lobby in 90s and that time also we objected we said you are giving a clue to huriyats they said pak administered kashmir now they have gone one step further to legitimize it now see the see the mischief between the line if the part of jammu and kashmir under pakistan is pak administered jammu kashmir then the part of jammu and kashmir under india is india administered jammu kashmir they have not written but this goes without writing see that is why i said I said, but Gonkar ji is too intelligent to write out of ignorance. He has left many things unwritten, but which will be used against you. So, if Pak administered Jammu Kashmir is with Pakistan and India administered Jammu Kashmir is in, with India, that means that the dispute is alive. You have legitimized the dispute. You have even questioned the right, the supremacy of the Republic of India over the part of Jammu and Kashmir under its control. And you have also, that is what I, the exact words I told to Mr. M. M. Ansari in the debate in Mumbai, the, one of the interlocutors. I said, you have outraged the sanctity of the Parliament of India. so we have rather so that is our second point our third point the report fails to address the issue of kashmiri pandits and other minorities of the valley like six it says they should go back there is nothing wrong in saying that our our stand consistent for the last 20 25 years is that you create conditions which are conducive which will attract not only the kashmiri pandits but even other communities of india to come and settle there and if that situation arises the kashmiri pandit will not have to be persuaded or given a package to go there this report simply says they should go back hyderabad partly also speaks urdu सो मिर्जा गालिब से चाहिए अच्छों को जितना चाहिए 
ये अगर चाहें तो फिर क्या चाहिए सो इज वेरी नाइस सिंग हाउ लाइकेबल पर्सन ब्यूटिफुल वोमेन मस्ट लाइक हर वॉट मैटर्स इज वेदर शी लाइक्स यू सो हु इज गोइंग टू बी दनी बे सो दिस इज थर्ड पॉइंट नंबर फोर आर्टिकल थ्री सेवेंटी एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी स्पोकन एट लेंथ वी बिलीव एंड फॉर दैट बिकॉज वेन यू स्पीक आउट आर्टिकल वी हैव ट्राई टू कैरी दिस डिस्कशन इन टू द इन टू द फोल्ड ऑफ द कश्मीरी मुस्लिम यूथ इट हैज क्रिएटेड अ साइकोलॉजिकल बैरियर मोर देन अ फिजिकल बैरियर एट द मोमेंट यू टॉक अबाउट दिस हो दीज पीपल हैव कम फ्रॉम दी सॉन्ग फ्रॉम दिस फ्रॉम बीजेपी फ्रॉम we have been for the last one and a half year saying that we are ready for an open debate on article 370 people from all hues all ideologies all backgrounds we will give you figures to prove that it has done more harm to the kashmiri muslim itself rahul has come out and got a job here the kashmiri youth has suffered from that point of view so we have to explain it that way also it has discouraged investment from outside it has prevented job creation within the valley and we not only stand for the abrogation of the article we also believe that anything that even psychologically gives an impression that we are separate has to be discouraged we have not to legitimize separatism our five, fifth point 1953 he says not feasible to go back but you could have a committee to review it now your argument should be and again you can carry it to the doorstep of the kashmiri muslim youth and explain to him in the name of this 53 the most exploited person is the kashmiri muslim and i'll tell you why this 53 thing was accepted by none other than sheikh abdullah 1952 in constituent assembly he also accepts that it's integral part after that sheikh abdullah goes to prison for 22 years that prison was as good as a guest house because he was placed in uti the best of the most scenic place and then the these provisions started coming in what was those provisions like election commission jurisdiction all along kashmiri muslim leaders and the separatist leadership has been complaining that you have had puppet regimes you have proxy chief ministers murarji desai was the only prime minister who held the first ever fair election that is what they say this is a popular discourse there but how did that happen because it was the jurisdiction of the election commission of india which had been extended okay the supreme court of india justice came to the common man in the valley through the medium of supreme court and what is happening today you read the newspapers the panches and sarpanches are out in the streets not in jammu and ladakh but in kashmir valley sudhakar ji will endorse in anantnag baramula muslim sarpanches they are saying you implement article the the, the amendment 73 and 74 of the local bodies act this also i told ansari ji one of the interlocutors i said the people the muslims of kashmir are asking for those provisions which are not already applicable and you are asking for review of provisions which are applicable because most of these provisions are in their interest it's just a political bogey why because once the 73 74 amendment is that's again a lesser known fact the entire central grant which amounts to crores of rupees 300 400 crore after every municipal election goes straight to these representative so if you don't implement that amendment in toto you see because this amendment was brought in in rajiv gandhi's time and different states have differently adopted it if you don't adopt it in toto then that grant comes through the through the panchayat minister or urban rural development minister of that state and there is a leverage a room for manipulation at the level of and that is now being realized by these panchis and panchis secondly when in, in sheikh abdullah came back to power in 1975 that was also one of the mistakes which indra ji committed because she didn't know that she is not going to last long and she thought she would be able to manage things but within 5 years she was no more so she thought that nothing would happen 
and she thought maybe because that time you know she was very mighty after the bangladesh war she was unsurmountable so she thought i'll settle this part also bring out sheikh abdullah and uh, rehabilitate him so that uh, that will give me some credit also the so called shere kashmir once but he she she could not see the chicanery behind as nehru did once <laughs> just beside the point sheikh abdullah happened to walk into the chamber of sardar patel when he was home minister and uh, somebody stopped him and sheikh abdullah told his secretary tell him i am known as shere kashmir and sardar patel said the sher or the lion should live either in jungle or in cage not in home minister's chamber so <laughs> i don't get bored down anyway like yasin well said in the show that i'll walk out then arnav said you can walk out but before that you answer the question which dr singh has put so what i am trying to say is when he came back to power he meekly very meekly told indra ji ke madam when i was there last time i was known as prime minister so indra gandhi said sheikh sahab and these were her words the hands of clock do not go back she was very curt lady i said i am doing something good for you go ahead don't try to shake went back for four five days he did not respond he was thinking then he spoke to his friends they told him lady is very dangerous she turned out her husband <laughs> firoz was living in a parliament members quarter if he is bringing you back come back and shake meekly came back there after for face saving what he does he constitutes a cabinet committee under his finance minister called mr devidas thakur the committee is gone down on record these are arguments on record we can put forward and you can tell the kashmiri muslim that this in the name of 53 and autonomy the people who are using this are in fact cheating the kashmiri muslim he forms a committee under his minister that time there were about 100 provisions of the indian constitution which were applicable to the state of jammu and kashmir that was the year 1975 the committee which was staged many comes out with a report that all these provisions are in the interest of the people of jammu and kashmir so the sheikh abdullah himself saying his grandson saying different why because as i always have written freedom separatism in kashmir is not ideology it is not to be compared with mahatma gandhi struggle it's more of a political weapon there are really three chief ministers when in par they say jammu kashmir integral part of india when outside the par they say it's a disputed sheikh abdullah himself was one as i am saying 75 came back the other was farooq abdullah who in 1989 to the governor rules were imposed said the youth should go across and get training in arms and third was gm shah the son in law immediately after ousted from and some party you know pro azadi party and now umar abdullah because he is finding himself cornered by another kashmir centric party called people's democratic party and in fact months before the 2008 agitation of amarnath yatra i said we are foreseeing i wrote that a very dangerous situation erupting because there is a very dangerous race between the national conference and the pdp because the election was just 6 months away so this is more of a political even you have a clerk in your office you dismiss him sir or you make an explanation call he'll go outside stand and outside and say pakistan zindabad azadi zindabad the easiest way to bro beat you in kashmir so this is what has happened sheikh abdullah so you tell them the persons whose demand the demand for pre 53 has not come from the kashmir masses it's not come from the kashmir muslim community not the hindus at all it has just come from one single party the national conference whose forefather who is established father himself has accepted it and this is again out of political experience and our sixth point about the appointment of a governor and the nomenclature the report says the governor will be appointed out of a panel of three persons suggested by the assembly uh, sudhakar ji i'll just take two minutes more the sixth point say the the report says the governor will be appointed or the three persons now we say we are this is going to set up a very dangerous precedent the president of india is a post like the governor in the state which was inspired by the monarchy in the united kingdom and the founding fathers led by b r ambedkar the constituent assembly which also considered shama prasad ji nehru and others 
decided that we will have a democratic replica of monarch. We cannot have King George or Queen Elizabeth and therefore we would have somebody like Babu Rajendra Prasad and some way, same way we would have a Raj governor. Now if you give the assembly the option to give a panel of three names, then what will happen? Because this is what was discussed in the party and they said, no doctor, this is nothing, not very dangerous. I, I told them what will happen if you implement in next 10 years. Next 10 years, just as your legislative council has become a Gaushala, Raj Bhavan will become a Gaushala. I am not comfortable with Sudhakar Raoji because I want to become chief minister and he is also a candidate. I will say, Sudhakar ji, why not I propose your name for governor? I will kick you up. You will be above me. Tomorrow, there is a dispute going on between Gauda and Yedurappa. Gauda will say, we'll, let's have a compromise. From the assembly, I will pass your panel. You become governor of Karnataka. We cannot take these things so lightly. This is going to have a countrywide ramification. And about the nomenclature, again, the report says uh, very mischievously that the nomenclature of chief minister and governor could be changed over to Urdu. Again, the question was put to us within the party that you could leave aside this because this is very innocent statement that it could be changed to Urdu because it's a Urdu speaking state. But again, there's a mischief, as I said in the governor thing. And we did some study about it and I was able to, uh, thank God, convince the rest of the friends. In Urdu language, the translation for chief minister is wazir e ala If you read, if you listen to Radio Pakistan News, listen to Pakistan Television. But there is no precise translation for governor. If you read, if you if you if you are a, if you are an occasional or a regular listener to the Radio Pakistan, they would say, "Baloch ke wazir e ala, a Punjab ke governor." <coughs> they use the word governor even in their Urdu bulletins. We have a word called Rajapal. For the president, the word is Sadar. Now, by implication, these interlocutors are saying that you change it to Sadar area, sir. The Sadar of the state, which becomes president of the state. So again, that you are again hitting the soul of Shama Prasad. You are going to have two presidents. How can you have a president in a state when you have a president sitting in Raisana Hills, when Pratibha Patil is still not given up her job. So these were the six main points and uh, four or five points which uh, we have not officially uh, passed and officially taken up but uh, just to keep in your mind because this uh, we will be talking about it is one about that they have not given enough uh, attention to the issue of Gilgit Baltistan. And please always keep in mind that it is, the, again we can argue on this, that the Pakistan constitution itself describes Gilgit Baltistan as a part of erstwhile Jammu and Kashmir. It doesn't call it, it calls Muzaffarab and this part of Kashmir as POK but not Gilgit. So we have a point to fight over there. And China is coming in from that side. General Kiani was in Beijing in January and there was a rumor that uh, Pakistan could lease out Baltistan and please remember not only it will be strategically difficult for India but also business wise because China has now strategically army wise taken over you know he is now uh, quite a match to US and others is now taking over your industry you have all fake Chinese things your Chinese mobile you have Chinese torch your Chinese men and Chinese women all fake and now what is required is power to run these fake things, fake men, fake women, how would you run? If it gets that Gilgit Baltistan, it has boundary sharing with Afghanistan, Russia and Afghanistan has rich gas resources. So China does not do things without a thought. Many of you may not be remembering when Mao Zedong died, it was a big wicket falling. Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad ji was here, president. He started discussing who should go. I should go, vice president should go, home minister should go. After all, Mao Zedong, big man. So everybody started packing baggage because 
there were very used to be very few trips into China those days. China would not allow foreign dignitaries. Now they have started allowing. Like, nobody had, and Mao Zedong all his life never went out of China, but kept the entire world in his control. So when they started packing their baggage, an announcement was made by foreign minister in Beijing that all those who condole the death of Chairman Mao Zedong are requested to go to the embassies in their respective capitals and write a note. <laughs> so China is too clever for us because they said, this, we don't want to have a funfair here. We never allow any foreigners here. This way they will have an excuse to visit Beijing and we will be spending crores on their hospitality. So if that comes, it will also be our business. So that is one point. The other is about, uh, they have not also addressed the issue of scheduled caste. Scheduled tribe section is still not applicable in Jammu and Kashmir. That issue is pending. They, a very dangerous suggestion has been made that you have a dialogue with Hurriyat. Now, this, they are legitimizing separatism. So, they say you have a dialogue with Hurriyat, you, they have a dialogue with Pakistan. And then, after all that, what emerges from that dialogue, you go to parliament. We are saying there is no dispute. We are saying what is, whatever is there is internal matter. And they are suggesting that you involve a foreign power, you involve somebody at another party. Like, you know, I am saying this is a dispute between me and my wife. My ex-wife is already divorced. He is suggesting me, no, you talk to your ex-wife also for some time. Then you also talk to your neighbor, what he thinks about your ex-wife and president. And then the entire panchayat will think how you have to deal. If we encourage this, this will go on encouraging this kind of intellectual terrorism. Because you see, intellectual terrorism has done more harm to this country. Why? Again, there is evidence. If you have a terrorist militant coming in, you have these x-rays, his revolver starts speaking, he is held out. But intellectual terrorism cannot be held because the brain doesn't give a signal. He walks in and he starts pouring venom. So beware of this intellectual terrorism which is being done. And then one more thing which just to clarify, this was said by some of us that regional council is something which BJP had proposed and they have addressed it. And some of our people who had not read the report completely also believe so. But it's not that. Somewhere about 10 years ago when Mr. Venkataya Naidu was the president, national president, we passed a national resolution that there should be three regional councils, which was with a national perspective. You could have these regional councils in any state, wherever you find that there is a grievance of equitable distribution of services not taking place. So we said there could be three regional councils, Jammu, Ladakh, Kashmir, for administrative and financial equitable distribution. Okay. Somebody at that time also said, Sir, what about legislative power? And Mr. Naidu, oh, what are you talking? You will have another assembly. So, this was in a very fair, gentlemanly suggestion and a resolution passed. What they have suggested is not our resolution. They say, you have a regional council with the power to pass sub-legislation. Now, what is that sub-legislation? We don't know. They are saying that sub-legislation will be a legislation based on the legislation passed by the assembly. You cannot have two assemblies in a state or three assemblies in a state. And then, as, but for the answer they have given is that you have a bill passed by the assembly. If you want certain changes, modification, depending on you have a sub-legislation. Now, how that sub-legislation will come forward? There is no provision in the constitution. He said that you will go to the consti um, some eighth schedule, sixth schedule of the constitution, and uh, we'll make an amendment. We'll bring it to the parliament, pass it to the two third, and then you'll have some. So. Neither there will be enough, na Norman tail hoga na Radha na chegi. So this is not our resolution. This is all fake. And they also say this regional council will be also subject to Article 356, which Professor Sridhar was talking about, which which has been a matter of debate since the times of Indira Gandhi. So Chief Minister could use Article 356 here also if he believes that the regional council is not functioning in the manner that he should. He, he should expect it to function, he could recommend to the governor that you dismiss it and appoint the administrator. So, it is not written with a true democratic spirit. And uh, last of all, which is not too significant to be included in the official uh, this thing, but uh, I just bring to your notice that in most of the states, the arrangement that we have uh, in the administrative setup is that we have 66% from the IES cadre, we have 44% 
from the provincial quarter. Sometimes they call it provincial services, some call it Punjab service, some call it Kashmir service, whatever. In the state of Jammu and Kashmir, they have 50-50, which already we have uh, been objecting to. And the interlocutor says, no, you increase the state quota. So if in other states it is 66% IAS, it will become 66% in Jammu and Kashmir. So whatever little linkage is left. So these are some of the things which we have uh, officially refuted and tried to change the discourse. The We would welcome discussion rather, uh, inst because instead of uh, you know this monologue go going on, and uh, thank God the hall is illuminated, otherwise you don't even know that the audience is sleeping or awake. The person goes on talking. Yeah. <laughs> so 